So you guys remember when I was going back and forth with um, uh, Broken Games, right? Well, remember how Broken Games was saying before how um, N4G was not a Sony fan site at all? Remember how he was saying all that? Well, aside from the fact that I did a Google search and showed you a whole bunch of websites and forums that said otherwise, even someone from our own community, Icy Rhythms, has said himself that, Sony, um, that N4G is in fact a Sony-driven website for the fans, by the fans, uh, for Sony fanboys, that is. So, to me, here's the situation. It seems like the only person who does not know about N4G and how it is a Sony-driven website is the guy who's in college. So, either two things is going on. Either A, the guy is that ignorant when it comes down to stuff like this, or B, he was doing his own fit of damage controlling, which is exactly what I said he was doing when I was doing the videos back and forth. Which one is it? Well, I'm kind of tired, so you guys be the judge of that one. At any rate, speaking of attention whores, I want to go ahead and turn my attention to Infinite Retro. Looks like Infinite Retro went ahead and did a video talking about uh, the difference between, uh, I think he said, I think he called it PC Gamers versus PC Users, or something like that. I forget exactly what it was. And um, he actually did have some pretty valid points there, as usual. So, I know for a fact that he wasn't talking about me, but I did want to go ahead and kind of talk about my history regarding PC gaming. Now, I'm not going to get in-depth in my history. That's a video for another day, which I'll probably be putting on my new um, particular uh, YouTube page, which I'm sharing with my other two brothers, which is called Three Bros All Game. You guys can go ahead right now and subscribe to it. The link is in the description below. And uh, right now, there's very little content on there right now. I'm waiting for all of us to get together so we can go ahead and start, you know, putting like a, um, you know, our content together on there. So that's coming very soon. So if you want to go ahead and subscribe to that channel right now, you're more than welcome to. But, or if you want to wait till there's more content, this choice is up to you. But anyway, um, so my gaming prowess kind of started in the 1985, between 1985 and 1990, somewhere in that area. Um, Basically, what happened was is that my mother actually went ahead and she had this job that she went to, right? Now, while she went to work and did what she did, I couldn't even tell you what she did. Why? Because I was in the computer lab gaming. Um, I found out about this particular game that you can play after you got past the whole tutorial part that they had for you. And uh, it was actually on an Apple 2E+. That's right, an Apple 2E+. So, essentially, originally, I started off as an Apple gamer, you know? Back in the day before, you know... You know, back in those days when this guy looked like this, instead of this. Well, I guess technically he looks like this, but you get what I'm trying to say. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, um, it was a small, it was back in the day when, like, you didn't have, like, like, good graphics were considered, like, small squares, you know, and small rectangles. Back in this day, you had these large one-color um, squares and rectangles, rectangles that you pretty much had to control there. So, um, and then color was not even an issue. Like, pretty much, it was either light green or dark green, you know? Actually, correction, it was either light green or no green, because at the time, um, there was no transparency or color shading or anything like that. It was usually just one bright green color. Consider Pong. Remember Pong, the original Pong, how that looked? Consider looking exactly like that, except for, you know, people use the shapes for different reasons. But anyway, um, so that was particularly the case for that one. Aside from that, um, what I've done is I've actually went ahead and continued on from there. Uh, eventually, I graduated from the Apple to an IBM computer. Uh, at the time, it's IBM. To, to, we call it Windows PCs today, but back in the those, back in the day, they was called IBM computers. And remember how you guys were? Um, you guys are actually going through that whole everything has to be a first-person shooter phase right now with your consoles. Yeah, we did that back in 1980 something to 1990. Honestly. Um, back in the day, id Software was shit, and they was doing games like, um, uh, what was it, Doom, Doom 2, uh, Wolfenstein 3D, um, Heretic, Hexen, all kinds of games, and they, either other companies was also doing it too, such as, um, um, kind of like the, the, not the company per se, but like some group of gamers, indie gamers if you want to call them that, uh, who was doing mods for Doom 2, in this case, the one mod they did was a Star Wars mod, and another one that I remember was Rise of the Triad. That was a great game. Um, back in those days, we still played a lot of great games too, uh, such as um, the original Warcraft, not World of Warcraft, mind you, but where War what Warcraft came from, which was original Warcraft and Warcraft 2, Starcraft. Um, the list just goes on and on about the many games that we actually played. Mist. Um, wasn't really a big fan of Mist, but you get the idea. Uh, my favorite, um, one of my favorite PC RPGs to this day, though has got to be, um, what was it called, um, Quest for Glory series. 
Now, I've already played Quest for Glory from 1 to 4, but you get the idea. Um, oh, I can't also can't forget uh, 3D Realms um, Duke Nukem. I gotta, you know, go back to those first-person shooters. But anyway, um, and I'll end up with this. Um, Quest for Glory was a great RPG, and I used to love the hell out of this game. Um, we played, I had 1 and 2. I never played 2. Because I was always stuck on one, but one was so much fun. I just, you know, at one point you couldn't get past it, but I did play four. Four was called Quest for Glory Shadows in the Darkness. And that one is, um, it's one where, like, well, it was totally different. Like, you know, you can definitely see the graphics kind of getting better and better. And of course, this was all in the day back before you had to worry about, um, we called them 3D, you know, we called them, uh, graphics cards now, but before they were called 3D accelerators and things of that nature. That's before those, you know, 3D graphics really came into play there. Once they came into play, of course, you had to really go ahead and take the game up. And I actually owned a computer called a 486SX with 4 uh, megs of, rem of memory, rather. That's right, 4 megs of memory. Not 4 gigabytes, but 4 megs of memory. And that was a cool part because I, used to, I had the weakest computer out of, out of everyone. Um, Legacy Force, Legacy Force had a better one than me. Noob had a better one than me. And what I did was I went ahead and modified my computer to the point where you know I could actually run every single game that they played. You know, I knew how to modify my computer where it would fake the eight gigs, it fake the eight gigs of memory. You know, where it only had four. And I would do so many things to the computer that by the time I was done, it would run everything and anything. So, I mean, like I said before, my PC um, history goes far back. And while a lot of people seem to want to think that, um, you know, I'm an Xbox fanboy or a PlayStation fanboy, I've actually been called that before, you know, believe it or not, or a Nintendo fanboy, the reality of it is, is that I'm not a fanboy at all. It's just the fact that uh, you guys use that to go ahead and relevate your own hate because you don't like the improved wrong. And that's pretty much what I do. I make a video, I prove what you're thinking is wrong, and you are mad. That's pretty much what it is. Seriously. I mean, there really is no getting around that one. Most of the, everything that I've said on this uh, particular website has, in fact, been 100% true. Every single um, thing I told you, the company's going to do this eventually, the company's going to do that eventually, this company's going downhill. I've been right, you know, about, I would say, 90% of the time. Yeah, just how it is. And instead of people just saying, well, you're right, Zephonix, good job, bro, so I'll sub up, because apparently you know what you're talking about, they want to go ahead and label you. So that way, they can feel like their, their, how to put it, their, their existence is justified. The fact that they spend way too much goddamn time on the internet, you know, hating on people and making it their lives, they want to justify it. So they have to by, you know, labeling you. That's how it is. But anyway, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe, and also go ahead and check out my other uh, particular YouTube channel called Free Bros All Game. Well, once again, the link is in the description below. You guys have a good night. Peace out.